So this is our last little piece of redox. Okay, we've been spending the last couple days on voltaic cells and galvanic cells, and these are electrochemical cells that are spontaneous, meaning if they're set up right, you will get positive volts, which means there is a thermodynamic pathway that does go forward because the one who oxidizes, oxidizes enough to push and overcome maybe someone who's not good at reducing, or the one reducing is good enough to pull the charge from the battery even though the one who's oxidizing may not be good. Or it's a combination of both being very good and you get the cumulative effect. That's why we did the voltages from the net potential table. But now, we're dealing with something that's not spontaneous. Now our battery, you should know, gives off energy. You should know because your phone is warm because of the energy it gives off. Obviously, without the energy, your phone doesn't work. Your computer doesn't work. Okay, so clearly a battery is exothermic. It's something that spontaneously gives off energy, of course, until it dies. It runs out of something in the salt bridge, the anode disintegrates, what have you. All right, now, what I'm speaking about today is about non-spontaneous electrochemistry, electrochemical cells. These are not voltaic cells. These are not galvanic cells. Now, before I do that, though, I want to talk about a couple of applications of um, galvanic or electrochemical cells before I get to this. First and foremost, okay, before there was a lot of plastics and polymers, pipes were pumped using a very cheap material called iron. And they recognized that iron rusted in the presence of water or oxygen very easily. So what they did to prevent rusting is what they did is they, they made something called a sacrificial anode. Let me explain. Okay, I know we have this up here and we'll use it, but if I've got myself a pipe, all right, maybe I'll just put a, um, I can't put anything in front. Um, if I have a pipe, and I'll just put it up here for a second, I want you to understand these applications, all right? So here's our battery, let's go to a new side. All right, so. Uh, if I have an iron pipe, and iron is used because it's relatively cheap. So if I had myself an iron pipe that was, let's say, pumping water to my house. We know iron is pretty high in the activity series. We saw it firsthand. Now what we would do occasionally, we would attach it by a wire to something that's more reactive, let's say magnesium. So what we would have is we'd have an iron pipe that's connected and that continues on to uh, miles and miles. And every once in a while, we would connect this iron pipe to a piece of metal that's more reactive like magnesium. Now, being that we're in the water, being, uh, I'm sorry, in the ground, and being that there's ions and there's water in the ground, you could pretend that, and you could do this quite well, that this would make a galvanic cell. Who is going to be the anode if magnesium and iron are touching? Who's more reactive, iron or magnesium? Magnesium. magnesium you know that from first-hand experience in your activity of metals lab. So who's going to be the anode if these guys are touching? Magnesium would be the anode. Now what would happen? Well, the magnesium would what? Oxidize first because it's better at it, and iron would be the cathode, correct? What happens at the cathode always? Reduction. Reduction. Can iron itself, can any standalone metal reduce? No, so this would be the place where reduction occurs, but by making magnesium touch the iron, what we're doing is we're making iron the place of reduction. It makes sure that iron doesn't oxidize. It prevents the iron from rusting. This will rust, and it'll prevent the iron from rusting because this is now the cathode. Oxidation can occur at the cathode. So that's what we do. Now, over time, the magnesium does what? Runs out, and you have to replace that. Now. Anybody who's got metal boats, okay? Okay, if you have aluminum boats, my dad used to have an aluminum boat on the bottom of the boat, okay? They have these little, little things in the bottom of the boat. 
okay? And these are called sacrificial anodes, usually made of zinc. So if you've got an aluminum boat, now if you've got a freighter, a big, huge ship, you can't make it out of aluminum, you make it out of iron. What they do, now you have salt water. Salt water in the water is your salt bridge. So zinc or aluminum, I'm sorry, it won't be aluminum, but if you've got an iron boat, what they do in the bottom of the boats is, uh, makes this iron. Zinc is more reactive, and zinc becomes the anode, and it prevents the rest of the boat from oxidizing in the salt water. But over time, you've got to replace these. Statue of Liberty. What's that color of copper oxidizing Statue of Liberty? Green. So I'm not even going to try to draw a Statue of Liberty holding something up. Okay. <laughs> not bad. Maybe. <laughs> All right. Now, Statue of Liberty is actually a copper shell. All right. Now, let me explain what happened to the Statue of Liberty because uh, in my time growing up in high school, we couldn't go to the Statue of Liberty because it was undergoing major reconstructive surgery. Underneath the copper shell, okay, there's an iron girder that supports it. So these are, uh, let's make this iron. So we had iron struts that support the shape of the Statue of Liberty. So this is iron here. Now, yeah, if iron okay supports the copper on it now they were smart enough not to have the iron touching the copper okay in fact when they first made it they had a leather covering over the where the iron would hit if you think about it for a second this is an iron support beam and this would be where the copper would sit onto it and they were smart enough to realize, so they, when they first built it, they put leather there. So this is copper on the outside, Fe supporting it, and this was some sort of leather. Now they knew it was going to be in a harbor, and using there was going to be salt water. Now here's the problem. They were smart. They knew this. When the two, when the two chemicals touched, okay, they knew there was going to be a battery made. And in salt water... The salt from the air and the water between these two metals would create a salt bridge. Now you say, well, what cares? We wanted that with the pipes. We didn't want it here. Look, who's better at oxidizing, Fe or copper, based on your observations in our labs? Fe. If you go to table J, you'll see Fe's higher. Now this is important. Once this leather decays and rots, it's organic, and it did, what happened was the iron was touching the copper. Who was going to be the anode? Who's better at oxidizing? Fe. So Fe was the anode, copper was the cathode. By iron touching copper, who was becoming copper plus two in this little solution here? Iron was rusting thousands of times faster than normal. The copper plus two that was being created by the salt and the water and the oxidation in this little gap here that now rusted away, the iron was touching the copper, the copper plus two was pulling electrons from the iron thousands of times faster than it normally does with oxygen. So the girder supporting the uh, Statue of Liberty was decaying thousands of times faster than it was supposed to. So they had to take off the copper sheets, they had to replace the iron, and then they put it back, but instead of putting this little layer here to protect it, they made it as a plastic layer. They also created little spots in the um, place where they put little pieces of sacrificial anodes, little magnesium bars. They put against that what? Iron. So that makes the iron, I'm sorry, the magnesium, the anode, sacrifices the magnesium and prevents the iron now as the cathode. We do this with bridges. Iron likes to oxidize. Salt water bridges will put pieces of zinc or magnesium in different places touching the metal and sacrificing the more reactive metal to prevent the oxidation of another. You should be aware of that. Okay, now let's get back to what this is about. Okay, this is about that falling. All right, now this is about this one right here. So today we're going to learn about electrolytic cells. Electrolytic cells, I guess here, have the electricity in them. 
These are different than what we've been learning. Notice what do I need here to make this work? Yes. A battery doesn't need a battery, does it? No. A battery would need a battery that would need a battery that would need a battery. Go forever if batteries needed a battery to work. Batteries are spontaneous. They're standalone objects that produce energy because we set up a reaction where someone who oxidizes well, someone reduces well, and there's a flow of current because of the force, the voltage created. Here, you get what kind of volts? Positive or? If I set this up, I would get what kind of voltage? Positives or negatives? Negative. Negative volts mean that you have to add energy to make this work. Electrolytic cells, electricity, energy is needed. These are endothermic. Batteries are exothermic. Very important you see that. So let me start you with this. So what do we do here? Let me show you how you attach this and understand how this all changes. First things first. I'm a realist. No. Um, I don't want to do this. I want to. I just came out. Sorry. Uh, let's go to the one I can write on. How about that? Uh, right here. No. Acrobat, I want to go to Java. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Okay. So first things first. I won't do that again. All right. Let's name the negative. Here's the what? Anode or the cathode? On the battery, the negative is the what? Because I didn't respond. It's the anode. Now, why they call it the anode? It's negative because that's the place in the battery where electrons are exiting. Because what occurs at the anode always? Oxidation. That's going to be true for the electrolytic cell, the cell that requires energy. Therefore, the positive charge must be the cathode. Ya or nine? Ya. Ya, ya, ya. Now, how do electrons always flow? We learned this already, that's also the same. Electrons always flow from the? The one that oxidizes, the one that reduces, the anode to the? Cathode. So right now I want to plate this fork. So the fork becomes the cathode. Has to be. Now let me help you with something. Would it be the cathode if this wasn't attached? Yeah. No, it's, it's nothing. It was a fork sit, sitting in solution. Nothing would happen. The battery forces the hand. So electrons are going to flow from the anode to the cathode. So the battery or the voltaic cell makes the fork the cathode. Now, this might seem cr crazy to you, but the cathode is going to be negatively charged. The reason why? It's connected to the negative part of the battery. All right? It's negative because it's touching the negative. If I was to take the battery and take these terminals and make them very long, take them and then turn them into the solution, wouldn't this still be negative? Take it turn it, this would be sitting in there negative. So this is still attached to it. It's an extension of that battery. Okay, what did I do? With my, okay, now, what happens? So if this is the cathode, what must this be in the electrolytic cell? The anode. What charge do you think the anode is? No, it's, it's, it's connected to what part of the battery? Yeah, so in this case, the anode is positive. Now, why? Who makes it? The battery forces this hand. Now, where do electrons flow? Always from the anode to the cathode, so put the what? Arrows in. All right. Now, let's see what happens. Electrons are pumped. I'm pumped. You're pumped. Okay? At least one of us is pumped. So electrons are building up at the fork. So I'm drawing some electrons. Maybe I'll just change my ink. So electrons are building up at the fork. Now, this is gold. What are we trying to do in this electrolytic cell? I'm trying to plate my fork with gold. I'm trying to electroplate. Electroplating is one of the um, uh, applications to electrolysis. So I've got electrons sitting here. Now, 
in order for me to plate gold, I've got to have gold plus three ions. Well, my friends, in chemistry, I have solid gold right here. Excuse me, guys. You can't learn it if you're talking, it, talking about it. Gold is right here. AU0. Now, what's going to happen, party people? AU0 is going to oxidize. AU0, we should all know that means solid. Anytime a metal is zero, it's solid, with the exception of mercury, but we won't see that. This becomes AU plus three. And three electrons are given out. We should all recognize this to be oxidation. Electrons are pumped back to the battery. The battery is pulling that charge and forcing gold to give it up. It's pulling the charge. And what happens is a solid piece of gold becomes what? It disappears. That, that little blue means it's disappearing, best I can do. Okay, and it becomes Al plus, uh, Au, sorry, plus three. What did I just do? I forced gold to oxidize. Gold hates to oxidize. It's our least reactive metal on our activity series. We're forcing it. So I'm forcing it to oxidize at the anode. What? Anox red cat is still true, guys. Anox red cat, anode. So, now Au plus three sees the negative, says, hey, it sees these negatives, and what happens at the cathode? Well, the Au plus three that was pulled from the solid gains the three negatives to become solid Au zero. I've been telling you this before. Plating occurs at the cathode. Cathode is with reduction. Cathode is where the ion becomes a solid. Yes? So it wouldn't matter what metal the fork is. It would not matter what the metal of the fork is, as long as it's a metal that can conduct electricity. If I was to put a plastic fork, it wouldn't work because you have to conduct a charge. Absolutely right. It is totally inconsequential what this fork's metal is. Yes? How did you get the three? Uh, I was telling you, uh, I'm telling you that gold is becoming plus three. Okay, if you look up gold, it becomes plus three. I'm saying this is aqueous gold chloride. It's probably molten, okay? So what would happen is the gold plus three sees the electrons, and as we've learned already, plating occurs. What happens to the mass? What happens to the mass of my cathode? I'm making a solid. What happens to the mass of my anode? That's, that's the same thing as the battery, okay? except uh, the battery is forcing this hand. Now, we would get, and we would keep going until this thing was gold-plated. And there's nothing more to this. How do I know it's an electrolytic cell? It needs a battery. How do I, what else do I know? Well, I know that it's non-spontaneous. I know that it's exo or endo. Endo. Now, other things that I know is that the cathode is the place of plating always. But that's still true in the battery. Only thing that's different really is the charges and the idea that you need energy here. Okay? So electroplating. Let's do an example of electroplating. Okay, now this is not I'm not gonna electroplate uh, gold onto something because I'm just fresh out of gold. Weird. Okay. <laughs> but what I do have is two lead electrodes. Okay, these are both lead. So we're gonna plate lead onto lead. That's crazy, right? All right, now, so I have my power source. Right now, is it happening? I can wait till the cows come home, and, and still, that's not going to happen, because in order for that to happen, I need energy. That's not spontaneous. Okay, lead likes to oxidize, but lead plus two hates to reduce. So we got to force it to happen. All right, so here's what I'm going to do. Take my, my power supply, make sure it turns on. Of course, I have to make sure it's plugged in. So I take my power supply, which will produce a DC current. Maybe. Okay. Something just went awry. Hold on.
point of that was to see if I unplug something when I need it, right? Okay. So, you just follow me doing that? Damn the way. Yeah. Okay, so clearly this is an. Uh, so, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to plate lead onto lead, and I'm going to use this power source, which, which is basically acting as my battery. Okay, at some point when this turns on again. Very helpful I don't unplug something. Okay, so what I'm going to do, take the red lead. The red lead represents the cathode. The black is famous for the anode of the battery. So I've got the cathode of the battery in my hand. What charge do we assign it? In the battery. It's, we're, we're, oh, this is the battery. It's positive. So I'm going to put the positive lead from the battery, which is attached to the cathode, and I'm going to attach it to this right side. Okay. What did I just make the right side? The positive lead of the battery, which is red. Okay. So this lead came up and attached to here. This was the red lead. This is from the positive part of the battery, which is the what? Cathode. cathode. Right. So this is the anode. I made it the anode because I attached it. What charge is it? The battery makes it happen. So it's attached to the positive. Then why on like the other, like why on this example is? The anode is positive. Yeah, but the anode the is positive. On the, on, on the battery, too. The battery is switched. The bat, the bat, this is not a battery. This is an electrolytic cell. Okay? The battery makes this happen. So the only thing that's really different is the charges here. But you can figure this out. So let's do the other side. Okay? Here comes the other one. Okay. Now, this is the black lead. This black one comes from the anode of the battery, which is what charge? That's the place where the electrons come from. This is the anode of the battery. So this makes the what? This is now the cathode. And it has to be what charge? No. The battery makes it happen. Cathode is positive in the battery, but in the electrolytic cell, it's the bat. I cut these leads. These have no charge. Okay, now, let's turn on the juice. Well, let's, what do we expect to happen? Well, at the cathode, we have what? Red cat is always true. What's going to happen at the cathode? Reduction. What happens to the anode? Okay, so oxidation. So right here, I expect PB0 to become PB plus 2 plus 2 electrons. These electrons are sent... From the what to the what always? Um, Anode to cathode always. So the cathode is going to pull electrons from the lead. This should get smaller and produce Pb plus 2. Now, this is the anode. Electrons flow from what to what? Anode to cathode, and I am pumping what? Electrons onto this cathode. Pb plus 2 says, mm-hmm, I like these. And what happens at the cathode? Red cat. Reduction. Reduction. So Pb plus 2 that was made from this gains the two electrons and becomes Pb0, which is what phase? Solid. And this one should get bigger. Enough talking about it. Let's see it happen. Okay? Do we see it? Yeah. It's getting furry. Now, it's not the best type of, of plating 
Because I'm in an aqueous environment. What's getting furry? Is this one getting bigger? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Reduction is plating. We're getting bigger. PB plus 2 is doing what? Gaining the two electrons right here. Theoretically, who's getting smaller? That theoretically is happening. So this is making ions who are jumping on this one. Okay? Now, it's not how we would do it industrial-wise, but we're, for, we're showing exactly what's happening. Now, let's have some fun here. Let's switch the leads. What if we take our lead chia pet here, let's turn off up the, um, the voltage, turn down the voltage. Notice it didn't happen until I turned it on. It's non-spontaneous. Now, I'm going to switch the leads. So I'm going to just switch the red that now was attached to the cap of the battery. Now, I'm just switching the leads. Now, if that happens, what's going to happen to my electrolytic cell? By switching the leads, and now I'm making this the what? Anode. The anode, right. This is now the anode. What? This is now the what? Cathode. What happens at the cathode always? Reduction. I need to grab this. Reduction means I'm making a solid. I'm plating. So when I turn this on, now the plating occurs over there, hopefully. And what? The chia pet goes down. So switching the leads, now I made this the cathode. And if you look carefully, these things are dissolving. And they're moving now the opposite way or the opposite way. PB0, which is over here, is becoming aqueous PB plus 2. The two electrons are going back to the cathode of the battery. And over here, the PB plus 2 that was made is jumping on to the electrons to make what? PB0. Okay? All right. Electroplating in a classroom, or a nutshell. I'm not sure if this is in a nutshell, but sometimes I feel like a nutshell. Okay. All right. Let's get him out of there. Let's put in the next victim. Now, electroplating is an example of electrolytic cells. What's in the word electrolytic? What's in the word electroplating? Electricity. You need electricity. You need power. So this is my next victim here. Now, I'm going to now go back to my regular leads. And now we're going to do electrolysis. Now, electrolysis is another form of elect uh, I'm sorry, uh, electrolytic cells. Electrolysis, of course, still needs energy. OK. Let's put him up Christmas in July. Let's do that. OK. Let that stay. Let's clean this off. OK. Now, what's different about this is that I am not really after electroplating. So if you look at the one below, oh, this is dangerous. Is that close? So Christmas. Ugh. So we look, scroll down. Here we go. Now this is odd. My electrodes are both the same metal. Now we're using platinum. The reason why we're using platinum is because platinum, okay, platinum does not react easily. Remember, the anode and cathode are places for oxidation reduction. So real quickly, what do we have here? This negative is the water of the battery, anode which makes this what charge? And it's the what? Anode goes to the cathode. knee bone, kicks it to the hip. Oh, sorry. All right, so this is the cathode. If this is the cathode, this, this side must be the what? Positive anode. Now, we have Ki liquid. What does that mean? That means, party people, that we, got K, we have K plus and we have I negative. 
Now, what's different about electrolysis is that we do this to purify metals. This is what we do to purify most of our metals. Mr. Grotsky, how do you have pure magnesium, pure sodium? How do we get these purified forms of very active metals? And we do this. In fact, aluminum is very active. We, do, we, we purify aluminum by the same method. But let me explain. Turn on the current. We have a buildup of electrons because electrons are flowing from the anode. Who's attracted to these electrodes? The positive ion who jumps on them. And what happens at the cathode? Red cat. Reproduction. Yes, not reproduction, reduction. K plus, plus one electron. Okay, who just came from health class? Okay, all right. K, K, K zero. It sounded like that, I don't know. So we're making a pure form of potassium right here. We're purifying potassium from this salt. What are we doing on the other side? This is important. I negative is attracted to the what? To the positive electrode. The K plus was attracted to the negative electrode. Now what happens at the anode? Anox. What happens? Oxidation. I negative loses an electron, Leo, to become I zero. Now in truth, iodine is diatomic. So you need two of these, two electrons in I two. You make pure what? What are we making? Um, We're making pure iodine. Oops, not that. We're making pure iodine, I2, solid. My friends in chemistry, electrolysis of a few salt is what we do. We take a metal like iron, uh, aluminum oxide. We heat it until we break apart the ions. And then we purify each metal at each electrode. Case in point, I have potassium iodide right here, but this is aqueous. Okay, now here's my red lead. Uh, my red lead is right here. So the red lead comes from the cathode of the battery, which is what charge? Positive. Positive. It, it's attached to this. This now is what charge? Negative. No, no, sorry. Positive, the battery makes it positive. This is the cathode, this must be the, this must be the anode. Electrons flow from the what? Anode to the cathode. On this side, I got the black lead. This comes from the anode of the battery, which is what charge? Negative, this makes this the what? What charges the cathode in the electrolytic cell? Negative. Electrons flow from the what? Anode to the cathode. Now, what do I have in solution? I dissolved K plus and I dissolved I negative. Where are they going to go? K plus is going to go where? It's going to go to the cathode where it makes K plus, gains an electron, become K0, the pure form of potassium, which by the way, alkali metal, very reactive. What happens at the anode? I negative, again, loses an electron to become I0. Now because it's diatomic, two of these, two electrons, you're making pure iodine. We're making the pure form of these things. So I'll stop talking about it. Let's turn it on and see. Because it's not happening unless I do what? Add some what? So what am I making here? What am I making at the anode? This is iodine. And what am I making here? Now you see some bubbleage? Yes! We're seeing bubbles right here. Someone said hydrogen. Why? Because what does K0 do in water? K0, is it pretty reactive? If we had it in our test tubes, in our reactivity metals of series lab, it would explode it. So K plus, K0 is pulling electrons from the water to make what? KOH and 
H2, we're not getting pure potassium here, we're getting hydrogen gas. Not the best way, but the color you're seeing is the iodine being made. Okay? All right. So it's under the same principles of everything you learn, except, okay, only thing that's changed is that you need a battery. You need a power source. The chargers are flipped. Oxidation still occurs at the anode. Reduction still, still occurs at the cathode. Okay? This is endothermic, non-spontaneous. Let's turn to the um, other side of this worksheet. Let's answer some questions. Number one. Which half reaction occurs at the negative electrode in an electrolytic cell in which an object is plated with tin? They give you a couple of hints here. First and foremost, negative electrode. If you don't remember that, object being plated, wait a minute, if I'm plating, I make it a solid. Oh, there's a solid. It's the only place that I'm making a solid. Isn't this reduction? A reduction occurs at the what? Cathode. cathode. Isn't the cathode negative? Okay. So what I'd like you to do is finish this worksheet. Look over the key that I have posted. We are done with redox. Okay. If you feel comfortable with this after you view the key, take the next dog, which is going to be the redox dog. And we're done with this unit. Okay. Biggest key is batteries exothermic. These guys require energy. All right. Have a great weekend. Please, if you have any questions, please refer them to other people. No, uh, you, you refer them to the email.